Creating cool, unique animations in Webflow is one of the key appeals of actually learning to use this tool. And in this video, we're going to learn some of the most common animations and interactions, things like loading animation, text masking, and horizontal scrolling. Now, we'll be using this very cool architecture firm website to learn how to do these things. And if you want to follow along with me, you can clone this project below this video and then build alongside with me. Now, one note before we dive into the video, this uh, video assumes that you already know how to build. So we're not going to really cover layout and actually building and structuring the whole website. If you're not comfortable about that yet, then I think a good place to start is our free one hour workshop that you can sign up below that would cover doing the layout and structuring things. Right now, we're just going to dive into the animation part of things. It's going to be super fun. Let's dive into it. Okay, so let's cover what we're going to be building. First of all, we have this loading animation, the logo fades, doors open, and then we have this uh, heading that is coming out from behind some kind of a mask. We have this button animation, which is basically a variation on the concept that we're gonna do here with the heading. And then we have here this hover animation. Uh, you might be familiar with this. It's now super trendy and popular in portfolio websites. And here we have a bunch of interesting things happening at the same time. So first of all, the image is showing up. It's also following my cursor. We have the arrow here that is being filled and this stuff here that moves, the text that actually moves. And then finally, we have this here where we're moving from the normal scroll into an horizontal scroll. And not only that, the images are also kind of scaling and fading out as they're getting to the edge of the screen. So before we go on and tackle how to create these very cool animations, I want to make sure that we are all on the same page and you understand the basic concepts of animation and how they work within Webflow. So I've got this uh, demo file open here, super basic with two divs, just so that we can play around with them. So what is animation? Basically, it's you know, some property is changing over time, right? It can be the color, it can be the position, it can be the scale, but it starts at some place and then it changes over time. So let's see how we can create this. Uh, let's say that when we click this, we want this to move around or something is gonna happen. So to create an interaction, we go here into the interactions panel and we add a trigger. So in this case, we wanna make sure that something happens when we click this element. And so I have here, we can define two clicks. So the first click is, let's say, I want this to move somewhere. Now we have a bunch of presets here, but let's create our own animation with start an animation. And then let's call this uh, animate box. So now that we have the box selected from the add button here, we can actually choose what kind of property is going to be animating. So in this case, let's try to move this around. So now we have this move and we have this warning sign here because we haven't defined anything, right? So let's play around with the move. So we have a few axes here. Let's move it around, you know, the X axis and maybe the Y axis as well. So now it's going to move from its original position into this new position, which is minus 210 and minus 218. And let's play this around and you can see that it's animating. Now it's animating in kind of an ugly way because the form in which it's animating, the speed in which it's moving is called linear. And what does that mean? This whole thing here that's called easing, super, super important. Now here's the idea. Nothing in real life just moves at a spe steady speed. Think about this, you're getting into a car, you want to you know, drive very fast. You don't move from a, the car standing into moving very fast immediately and then you stop back to zero back again. No, you accelerate from zero to a very high speed and then when you want to stop, you decelerate back to zero. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, quite weird, which is what's going on here. It's moving from a speed of zero into very fast and then immediately stops. This is not natural. So we have a bunch of ways to describe this acceleration and deceleration. And this is basically what we call easing. Now you see, you have a bunch of stuff here. How do you know what to choose? Now here's an example that basically shows you how each of these things actually look, right? So all of these are examples of the circle moving 500 pixels over three seconds. But you can see that sometimes it start off slow and then accelerates and each of them is actually moving differently, right? So you can, by the way, Google, or we will link this easing in Webflow, and then you can understand basically how each of these easings work. So let's try something like, you know, easing is out, ease in, ease out, which means it will accelerate and decelerate. Let's preview this. Now you can see that it's 
accelerating and decelerating. It's very kind of like fast. It's happening very fast. Let's try this in out cubic. So now you can see it, it moves a little bit more natural. Okay, of course we can animate other properties besides the move, right? We can, you know, rotate this as well. Now, let's say that we're rotating a little bit. No, let me undo that and rotate this way. Now note that we have two elements. The first one is the move and then the rotate. If I'm gonna hit play, you're gonna see that it first moving happen and then rotation happen. So we have one, two. So this is a sequence. If I want them to happen together, I just drag this to put them all together. And now you'll see they'll actually be animating together. This is really important and we'll be doing a lot of that throughout the uh, video. Okay, so now that you've got the basic, you understand how to animate, how to create a trigger that will cause the animation and how to set the easing right and the properties. Now basically you know everything you need and now it's just about uh, applying these very simple concepts um, creatively to create all of the effects that we're seeing here. Now let's break down what's happening in the loading animation. So first I have the Figma file here that I would use to build this. And I just put this here just so that we can see basically what we want to happen. So imagine that we have the website here and on top of it, we have a layer that has these two separate kind of like blocks, right? And the logo. So first I'm going to decrease the opacity of the logo. So this is the first thing that we want to do. And after the logo has been disappeared, basically I want to kind of like open up these doors. So basically what's going to happen is we want to scale the size of these elements from taking half the screen, this is going to animate back to zero, and this one from taking half the screen, it's going to animate into zero. So basically we have two steps here, right? Fade out the logo and then open up the doors by first property will animate is opacity and then we'll animate the size of these blocks. So I've got the project here without any animation and let's see how this is structured. So you can see here that we have the page and everything on top of it and then we have another div that's currently hidden that is the overlay for the page load. Now it's currently hidden so that we can actually see the page but let's turn this on so that we can see what's in here, right? So I changed the display into Flexbox. And again, I'm not talking about how we build this and why it's built out this way. If you want to understand more about the structure and layout, do the introductionary uh, workshop. But basically what we have here are three elements. So we have an element for the left side and then an element for the right side. Each of them is 50% in width. And then on top of them, we have the logo. Now the logo is on top of them. That happens because it is positioned absolute. And that means that it is on top of uh, what's going on, you know, in the div itself. Also, this page lo load overlay is also positioned fixed and has the uh, Z index of 2000 so that it's above everything else on the page, right? So the page wrapper, so the page load overlay is on top everything that's on the page and the logo is above everything that's on this overlay thing here. Okay, so we have these three elements Let's try to animate them. Now, first of all, we're going to hide this back again because basically we don't want to see this. Otherwise it's going to, if we always have this visible, it's going to very, be very hard to kind of work with the website. That's why we always keep these uh, loading animations hidden, uh, display hidden so that, you know, we can keep working on the website and this loading animation is here. So how do we create the loading animation? We go into inter interaction panel and what we want to add is a page trigger that's page load. So this means that this animation is going to trigger immediately either when the page starts loading or after the page finishes loading. So in this case, we want this to trigger immediately. So let's create an action when the page starts loading. Let's create an animation and I'm going to create a new one. I'm gonna call this load animation. Okay, so what do we want to happen? Now, first of all, we need to make sure that we are actually seeing this element because we can't see it right now, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to make sure that this one is selected. And what I wanna do is I want to change the hide show. And this is basically animating the display property, right? So I want to move this back into flex so that we can see this. And I also want to make sure that I click this 
set as an initial state. This means that when the website is loaded, it's going to ignore the fact that we've hidden it, right? Just so that we can keep working in Webflow. And it's going to address it as if it was visible to begin with. So this is how the website actually going to load. So immediately people are actually going to see this. Okay, so first thing that we wanted to do was to animate the logo. So I'm gonna click on the logo and then I'm going to add an opacity animation, right? So we're going to change the opacity to zero and I'm actually going to put here a delay of 0.1 because if I don't add this immediately as you know, people, the website is going to load, immediately the logo will disappear. We wanna have a slight tenth of a second that people can actually see the logo, read the name of the company, and then we're going to animate it down. And let's set the duration to 0.8 of a second. So let's preview this. So you can see people can see very shortly the logo and then it's kind of like fading out. After it's fading out, now we actually need to change, you know, to animate the doors. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that I one of the doors is selected and I'm going to edit, I'm actually going to animate the scale of it, right? So after this happens, we're going to animate this and let's change this to zero, okay? So it animates into zero. And we can do this over 0.8 seconds. Let's see what happens when we're animating this. Now note, it's animating and it's scaling both the X and the Y. And I don't actually want this. I only want it to slide. So let's break down this lock and let's actually reset this. So it's only animating the X axis into zero. And let's do this. And it looks good, but again, linear is, we're probably always going to avoid linear. So let's do the in quint, which is just going to start accelerating. We don't care, we want it to finish very, go out very fast. So we just want an initial fade out. So this looks great. Now we need to do the same for the other DAR. And here we can just duplicate this, make sure that they happen together. And we're going to change the target from this door to the second one. So just clicked on it and it should basically be working. Let's play this, animate, doors opening. Fantastic. Now we're almost done. And this is one part where a lot of people can just forget about it. We also need to hide because if we're not hiding this page overlay, we still have something that's invisible, but on top of everything else and people won't be able to click buttons or select text or actually even scroll. So we must actually hide the overlay after this happens. So let's pick that up, select the page overlay wrapper again, and let's make sure that we hide it. This actually needs to happen at the end. So display set back to uh, hidden. Nobody is going to see this. And so we need to make sure, and this happens immediately, right? So duration zero. So what happens is first we're seeing this and then the opacity goes down, doors opening, and then the whole element is hidden and people don't even know that it ever existed. And we can continue into the next element. So now we have the loading animation. Now. It's, it's a good place to actually continue in doing the next animation, which is the text going up um, from this interaction again, because it happens immediately after it. So let's talk about how this happens. What do we want to animate right here? So again, let's jump into the Figma uh, just so that we can basically explain what we're trying to do here. So we have a bunch of text and we want to find a way to mask it. So basically what do we need? We need a mask around this text and then we need to make sure that you know, they are masked so that when we move the text around, you see the, the, the mask will basically cut off the text, right? So this is, it's going to be below and then it's going to animate up. So this is basically what we're trying to create in Webflow. Now, how do we create masks in Webflow? I hope you know this by now. It's by wrapping up the text. So let's see what we have here. Um, let's, let's, let's basically just go here because I want to show you how it's structured. So here in the, actually the text, you can see that we have the heading text, but it's wrapped inside a header link mask. It's basically just a div. And the only thing that's happening on this div is that it's overflow is set to hidden. This basically means that if something, 
specifically the text is outside of the size of this div, it's not going to be visible, right? Everything that overflows outside of this div is going to be uh, hidden. So if I'm going to pick just the text here, and I'm going to go here below to transform and just move things around. So let me just move this around, you can see what happens as it goes outside of the div, it's being kind of like masked. And this is actually exactly what we want to do. So let's go ahead and do this. And let's go back into our animation. So load animation. And so that happened. This is great. Now we want to animate the text. So I'm going to select just the header text, not the mask itself, but the header text that's inside the mask. And first of all, I want to make sure that when it happens, you, we don't see the text. So we need to set an initial position where it is kind of like down below. So let me go ahead and add a move movement. And I'm going to move it something like 120% below, right? So 120%, it moved it down below, right? And I'm going to set this as an initial state. Okay, so now this happens. And now I can animate it going up. So let me duplicate this and take it after everything happens. And let's see how we are going to animate it. Let's say that now we're animating back to zero over maybe 0.6 second. Um, and let's do out cubic. Um, let's see out cubic because now we want it to arrive fast and then kind of like slow down. So let's preview this whole thing. And whoop, you saw that now it came up, right? So this is great. It's animating, we need to do the same for the second line. And it's going to be very easy to just duplicate what we have here. So let's duplicate this one also as an initial state, but let's change the target and pick the second heading, move that down as well. And let's take this and duplicate that one and uh, change its target to the second line. Now, what you can see here is that this is going to happen. And then this is going to happen. Now this is actually too long of a gap, right? We want this to start happening while this is happening. So I'm going to put them together. But now they're actually just going to go up together. So for the second one, I'm going to add a little bit of delay, maybe 0.2 second, let's see how that would look. So moving now you saw that it's happening a little bit afterwards, right? Let's trigger that again. And they're going so basically, we have it, you saw it was very simple. But there's one more thing that I want to add here, which I think can be pretty cool. I think that we sometimes there is this effect where it kind of comes up letter by letter, right? And we can do this, but it will take so long. But we can kind of fake this if we kind of like skew the text and then bring it up, right? Let me just go back here, um, outside of the animation. And let's try this. If we go here into the text itself, and we're going to go here into the transform, and we're going to skew, um, maybe skew over the y axis. So something like this. So if we skew this, first, the left side is going to come up and only then the right side, if we're going to animate it back, the right side is going to come. So I think this will make the animation look a little bit more cooler. So let's go back and see how we add that it's actually very simple. And we need to basically do the same thing that we did for the move, we need to set an initial position and then animate it back to zero. So from a little bit skewed into not skewed. So let's see that we're picking the first sentence. Let's go ahead and add a skew. And let's say that we want to skew this um, maybe four four degrees, something like that. And, uh, and then let's duplicate this. And when it's animating back, let's say that we want to skew it back into zero, same thing that we had the other in the other animation 0.6. No delay on this one, because they happen together with the first heading and let's do out cubic, let's preview this. So now note, it was happening very fast, I think maybe let's let's make the animation longer just so that you can see it. Let's make it 1.2 seconds. I'm going to make everything slower. In reality, you don't want your animation to take so long because people will get bored and we don't want to bore them with animation. But just so that you can see what's happening. You can see that it's coming up skewed. 
and then it's animating back into position and it's really, really nice. So let's do the same thing for the second headline. Let's duplicate this. Let's start from, let's change the target to the second heading. So this is starting from a skew of four and then skewing back. Let's duplicate the end position and then change the target and add a tiny bit of delay. So it happens along with the second heading and let's see that it happens. And now it's great. Now it's a little bit slow, but I just wanted to demo this to you. All right, so with that, we've got the loading animation done and we've got the uh, mask text animation done. Let's see what happens here on this, basically on this button. So in the button, basically you can see that we have the same principles that we had before, right? The letters themselves are broken down into basically it's the text and then each letter is wrapped in a span so you can wrap it in a span like this so that you can give it a separate class i'm not going to redo this because you basically you should be able to understand what happened right so this each letter has its own class you can see here cc2 uh, cc3 so that basically, and they are all within the main CTA text mask. So now you can start animating letters up when you do the hover animation. Now, actually here we have something interesting. We have the text two times. So these letters going up and we have a duplicate of the letters that are hidden below and they're going up. So that looks like the letters are kind of like rotating and create this very nice effect. So basically using the same method that we have created above. Quick break to say that if you're feeling like you're overwhelmed, you've got questions, you're not sure why things are not working out properly, please consider joining the Webflow Masterclass, which is our full-on course taking you from the beginning all the way to somebody who can build full-on website like you're seeing right now and has our coaches supporting you and answering all of your questions. So check that out. Let's go back to the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and now create this hover animation that we have here. Let's break down what's actually happening here. So first of all, something very simple happens. This whole element gets a background, right? And the, these texts are being kind of like pushed to the side. So this is really, really simple. And we don't actually even need an interaction for this. This is very, very basic. So I'm going to choose one of them. It's called expertise item. And I'm just going to change here from the selector into the hover state, all right? So this basically defines what happens when you know I'm going over this element with my cursor. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna change the background color. And let me copy the, the color that I want to change here, which is basically you know some kind of a very, very transparent gray, all right? with a very low opacity. So this is what I want. Now, if I go back here and I just go over, you can see now it's getting a background. Now it's not animating yet, we'll fix this in a second, but the background for this element is changing. Now, the other thing is we want to, we want the text to be pushed around a little bit. So what we're going to do is going back to the hover state, we're gonna add a little bit of padding. So let's add you know a little bit of padding like this to the whole element. And now going back into it, I can hover. Now you can see that it's changing the background color and because we have padding, it's being pushed around. Now, how are we going to animate this? Let's go down here when we're back in the normal state, the non-state, we can scroll down below here into the do, 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 transitions, right? So in the transitions, now we can pick what is animating. So in this case, what's animating is the padding and let's do 300 milliseconds of transition. So we want to animate this over 300 milliseconds. The other thing that's fading is the background color. So let's choose the background color, also over 300 milliseconds. And let's preview this. And now you can see it's just fading and transitioning smoothly. So this is very, very cool. Okay, so let's dive into the next thing that we have here, which is basically the image is showing and the text is changing its colors. All right, so let's start with the image and then take care of the arrow. So the image, how is the image structured? So you can see here that for each one of these expertise item, if I'm going to open it up, we have the text, of course, but we also have this image. And this image, 
currently it's hidden, right? I can put it as display and now you can see all of these images. But they're hidden and they are set to be positioned as absolute so that they are outside of the normal uh, you know, state of things. They're not taking up space inside of this whole expertise item. They're just on top of it, okay? So again, if you wanna learn more about absolute positioning and how it works, check our intro workshop. Um, but basically this is how we position it on top of the navigation itself or the, the item itself. And now it's just hidden. So basically what we need to do, we need to add an hover animation and just make sure that it's shown. So let's get, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to select this expertise item. I'm going to go here and I'm going to create, oh my God, I already have this mouse hover created. Let me delete this and recreate this, right? So I've already created it. Let's recreate this. So now that it's, uh, I'm going to add a mouse hover interaction. Now for mouse over, we actually need to define two different animations. What's going to happen when I'm hovering on top of it and what's going to happen when I hover out, which is usually just a reverse kind of animation. So if it's, it's now showing the image, the opacity is going from zero to 100. When I'm going to, you know, hover out, the opacity is going to go from 100 to zero, something like this. So it's going to be easy to do the hover out. Let's start with the hover in. So let's call this hover in. And what do we need to do? So first of all, the image is, is not here. So we need to make sure that we see the image because right now it's hidden, right? So I'm going to select the image and I'm going to go hide show. We've already done this before in the loading animation. I'm going to make sure that it's set to display immediately. However, now that it happens, I don't want it to just show up on my screen. I want this to fade nicely. So let's make sure that before we're showing this, the initial state of this element is that it has an opacity of zero. So let's make sure that the element is chosen and going to go into opacity and going to put it down to zero and make sure that I trigger the set as initial state. So now before the animation even starting, the opacity is zero. And once I'm hovering, immediately it's being shown, but I can't see it. So now we need to fade it in. So let's do, let's duplicate this and put this after the hide show and animate it back into a hundred. And we can do this over, uh, let's see, how long should we do this transition to do, 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 maybe point, point 0.3, I don't know. Let's play this. Okay, so now the image is animating from opacity zero to opacity 100 over 0.3 second. So this is great. This is what we wanted. Okay, so that's great. Before I'm going to do the hover out, let's talk about this arrow and how to animate this. Now, you may have noticed that this arrow is actually not um, an icon. It's actually a text. It's actually an embedded code, right? Um, and it's actually a code for an SVG icon. So why didn't I just brought in an image of the arrow and edit it here? Why did I add it as code? Now, here's the thing, because currently, um, Webflow does not allow us to natively change the properties of SVGs. Um, so it would just be a static icon and then maybe I need to fade out between two elements. But if it is code, then I can do something very cool, which is defined that the feel of it is the current color, which basically means that, you know, it's going to pull its color from the color that we have here. So right now the color of this expertise icon is white, but if I would choose it to be blue, for example, you can see that the code basically pulls the uh, color from here, right? So I'm going to keep it this way. And by the way, you don't need to know code. Basically you can go into Figma, right? And you can just go here, select this and maybe export it as an SVG, right? Uh, so let's call this arrow SVG on my desktop and then basically just open this up in some text editor. Let's do text edit. And now basically I have this code. So now, you know, I can just copy this and add it into an embed element that we have here, embedded code. Now, the only thing that I did was if you go ahead and read the code that we have here, you can see that the stroke is black and that's everything that we have here. We don't have fill, right? Um, 
So the only thing that we changed here in the code is basically put in fill equals current color. So this is the level of code you need, writing fill equals current color with a capital C, and then basically we'll pull it from this typography color, which now we can animate. So let's go back here into our animation hover in, and let's select this icon, and let's change the text color. So the text color is going to change into black, right? And I want this to happen actually together with the image showing, um, also 0 0.3, 0 0.3 in terms of the duration. So now you can see that it's animating, fading into black. Now this is great, let me save this. And now we need to duplicate this as the hover out. So let's go ahead and select an animation, but instead of just choosing the hover in, I'm going to duplicate this, uh, hover in two, let's actually call this hover out. And what we need to happen here is just the other way around, right? So first we need to animate from um, back to zero, right? The opacity of the image needs to transition back to zero over 0 0.3. Um, and then the text color need to fade back into this white smoke, white smoke that we have here over 0 0.3. And then we don't need this, the 100%, we can delete this. And then the high show at the end, so after we have faded the image out, we also want to hide it so people you know, will not be able to click it. So let's just bring it back to display none. So now it's fading out. Now we can't preview this because we can't see this right now, but let's see the logic here. So opacity is fading to zero, text color fading back into white smoke, and then the image is being hidden. Let's test this out and see if it works. So now it works and it's really great. So this interaction works, but the one thing that we do want to add here is the fact that it's going to follow my cursor around. So let's go ahead and add that. To add an animation that basically follows my mouth, I'm going to ch uh, choose the expertise item and I'm going to add a new um, kind of interaction trigger that is called mouse over element. And you'll be able to see this new icon, which means continuous interaction. This means that we're not just picking point A and point B and animating between them, but Webflow is basically going to interpolate the animation all the time as our mouth moves. Let's see how that works. I'm gonna add a new animation and you can see, let's call this mouse animation. You can see that basically we can animate over the X axis of the mouse, which is basically left and right, and over the Y axis, which is up and down. In this case, we just want to animate the left and right of the image. So actually to be able to see the image, let's make the image visible. So let's go back here, choose the expertise image and make it visible at least temporarily so that we can see what we're doing here. Let's go back into the hover animation and let's pick the image and animate it. So let me select the move. And as you can see, Webflow automatically added basically two points. So what happens the position where the uh, X is equal zero, which means all the way to the left and a hundred, which means all the way to the right. So let's start by you know, defining these two positions. So it's all the way to the left. We want the image to move a little bit to the left. So I'm gonna drag the X axis to the left. And here on the right, I'm just going to drag it a little bit to the right and I can't see anything. Looks like nothing happened. And to see this, we actually need to turn the live preview on. And now you can see as I am moving my mouse, you can see this right, this uh, green thing here, which basically indicates where my mouth is um, in the animation. And the animation goes, moves, you know, as this, my cursor moves over this element. Not when it's moving outside of this element, just when it's on top of this element. So basically, that is it. It's very, very simple. The, only, the last thing that we want to do here is just rotate maybe a little bit. So let's add a rotation as well. Just a tiny bit of rotation maybe just like a few degrees, like minus three or something, and then duplicate it also to the other side where it's going to be like seven, or I'm just randomly picking numbers, and let's see how that looks. Yeah, so now it's rotating to this side, 
rotating to, rotating to that side. That looks fun. All right, so this now works. Now, here's something that's really important that we didn't talk about before. So actually two things that I want to talk about. Number one, this the hover animation that we did here, we need this thing to happen on all of these elements. And I don't wanna apply it four times. So I wanna make sure that the hover animation is happening not just for this element, but for the whole class. So every expertise item is going to get this interaction. This is really important, okay? And the same thing I want for the mouse over element, I want this to happen for all the classes. Now let's go back and um, hide the image because we can't see what's going on. And let's try this right now. So now it's working for all of them and it's also animating and moving as we're moving. Now there's one tiny little thing that I do want to do here. And that is note that as I'm moving outside, it's kind of jumps back into the original position because the, the hover interaction only happens on this element. So when I'm outside of this element, it basically goes back to its original position and it jumps very fast right now. So we can change this by if we go to this expertise item, and go here into the mouse over element, we have this smoothing thing. And if I'm going to take it all the way here to almost the top, and I'm going to preview this now, now you'll notice that as I'm taking this outside, it kind of slides back to position much more smoothly and slowly. So it, it feels much more premium and nice when things are kind of like slow and steady this way. I might have overdone the rotation a little bit on this example, but anyway, it's pretty cool. Okay, with that said, we're ready to move into our last example here, which is the horizontal scroll. So first, let's talk about how we are even thinking about horizontal scrolls, because you know, people all, all only scroll down, right? We don't have the function of scrolling horizontally. So how is that even working? So let me jump back into Figma just to explain this again. So what really happens is that this whole section is actually very, very long, okay? It's very, very long. And as people scroll around, what we want to happen is two things. Number one, we need this whole section that we have here, all of the content, to scroll around together with it. And we can do this by using the sticky position. And again, if you're not familiar with the sticky position and all of those, go, go into the introductory, introductory course. But what we wanna do is we want to make sure that this is sticky all the way until the end of the section, and then we can continue into the next section. And then basically what we'll do is we will add an animation that does something while we are scrolling. So a continuous animation, just like the one that we did for hover, we have another one for while scrolling into view, in view. And basically what we'll do is as we're, as you know, the people are scrolling, undo scrolling, we want this to start moving as they're scrolling more, it will move more and basically move that around. So this is basically the logic of what we'll try to build right now. So let me go into Webflow and show you how this is structured. So in here, in this section, basically we have this wrapper, which is called Projects Content Wrapper. And if I'm gonna go here, you can see that its height is set to 400 vertical height. So 100 vertical height means the full, you know, length of the screen. So 400 basically means four, four times of scrolling, four screens of scrolling. And now the thing that we have inside the this element here, right, the the projects list is set into position sticky. Okay, and you can see that here position sticky, what that will do is as I'm starting to scroll, you will see it's it's going to stick here to the top. Now I'm scrolling, note here the scroll bar. I'm scrolling, scrolling, it looks like nothing's happening, but actually the background is scrolling. There's a bunch of very, very long background and it's scrolling, 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 scrolling until we get to the end of it and then the sticky position is being released and then we move on to the next section. Okay, so this is what's happening right now without any interaction. 
Now let's see how we're going to add an interaction. So the element that we want to add an interaction to is the project's content wrapper. This is the very long wrapper. This is like the, the thing that holds this whole thing here um, because that's the thing that's scrolling in the view while all the other things are just stuck in the view. So let's add an interaction to this. Let's add while scrolling in view and add a scroll. Let's call this scroll interaction. And you will see that it looks very much like the uh, what we had with the mouse where zero where it's just starting to scroll. And then when we get to the bottom of it, things will move. So let's pick the first image and I'm going to choose this image wrapper here and move that around. So let's define that at the beginning, it's going to be in this exact position. So let's do zero, I'm going to use vertical width here just to define the position. So I'm going to start from zero. And by the end of it, it's going to be at minus let's say 79 vertical width. So it just moved. Let's preview this and see if that works. And I don't want to affect all the class just this single element. Right. So let's see this. Now it's as I'm scrolling in, it starts moving. The reason that I'm uh, animating them separately is because I want to define exactly when this starts to, you know, fade out and it's going to be different for these people. So um, it's working, but it's kind of weird because it's, you know, as this starts scrolling, you can see that we're already scrolling, we're already animating in. And I actually want this to only start happening when we're at this position. So I can save this and I can go back here and you can see that the animating animation boundaries is zero is with the element starts entering. And actually what I want to do is I want to make sure that it starts animating only when it's fully visible. Okay, so let's go back to the scroll interaction. And let's preview this right now and see now I'm starting to scroll, nothing happens. And now that I'm getting only getting here to the fully visible, this is the zero and now it will start moving. So this is great. So now it's animating out. And uh, yeah, this is great. So the other thing I want to do is I want this to scale a little bit, right? So let's add another scale um, to this image wrapper. So let's put scale. At the beginning, scale is, you know, one and one, that's great. One means 100% basically original size, zero means, you know, zero, two means double the size, right? So let's start from one, let's duplicate this. And at the end of it, let's say that it scrolled into maybe I don't know, point point nine or something like this. Uh, let's preview this right now. So now you can see it's going down, maybe it's two, let's do 0.8 or something. So we can see it more prominently getting smaller. Note, they're all getting smaller because this is being applied to uh, the scale is being applied to everything Effect interaction, just a selected element, right? Not everything else. So just want to make sure that only this is starting again, these are why are they scaling? I don't want them to scale. Just this thing needs to scale. Oh, because I chose the uh, the content wrapper to scale. Let's change the target to the just the first item. And this one change target to just the first item. Okay, so I was targeting the wrong thing. I just want this single element to start scaling. Let's preview this. Now you can see it's scaling. It's the only thing that's scaling. That's great. So we're getting here, this starts moving and fading out. How to do, make it fade out? Also, let's add the opacity. So opacity going from 100 to duplicate this to when we get to the end, maybe like 30 or something like that. Let's preview that. So it doesn't completely disappear it just fades out a little bit. Now you can actually see that, you know, by the time that we get to 36% or maybe like 50%, we can't even see this anymore. So it actually doesn't make sense. I mean, we should probably bring the opacity to maybe 50 and maybe the scale as well to 50. If we want all of this to actually happen, you know, by the time that we get, we can still see it. Okay, so now this makes sense. Okay, so now this, this is a good animation. 
Now we can start doing the same thing with the second element. So let's pick the second element here, which is second element. No, this one, second element, second item. Actually, oh no, I've made a mistake. Look, I've, I'm only moving the image and not moving the, the name of the hotel and all of that kind of stuff. So I actually need to animate project item instead of the project image. Let's change the target to everything here to item, scale, change target to item, not project item, opacity, change target, project item, this as well, change target. So as you're animating, you will make these types of mistakes as well, but it's fairly easy that Webflow gave us the op option to change target. So no, this one, not project list, nope, just item. Okay, so now let's see what happens. Now it's animating. What happened now? There, I've selected the class no justice element. Okay, preview this again. Okay, now it's animating together with the text. Now it's working properly. Okay, so now we need to start doing the same thing for these things and let's try the duplicating thing. So let's duplicate the move, duplicate this, change target, let's pick the second item. Let's take this one and let's duplicate this. Let's change the target to this one and see how that looks. So now they're moving together. Okay, so now, no, now we wanna add this scaling and fading out, but we only want that to start triggering when it gets to about here, about the 50%. So now, so these things, the opacity and scale, let's duplicate these things, duplicate um, and change target to I second item. We only want them to start here. So at the 50, almost 50%, there's still 100, right? And um, let's do the scale, duplicate the scale, change target to the second item, and then move that one here and then let's duplicate to the end and in the end it's going to be maybe 0.8 and duplicate whoa 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 what did I do duplicate again with maybe 30 percent so the first the first element is basically fading out from zero to 50. The second element is basically fading out from 50 to 100. Let's see if this actually works. One thing that you want to make sure before you test this out to see that it actually works is because we're animating them separately, you always want to make sure that what you're animating affecting is the selected element and not the class because otherwise they will start reacting all together. So in this case, everything that we're doing affecting just this element and not the class, because by default it's class and it can mess things up. So let's test this. So right now, first one scaling, second one starts to scale when we reach 50, and that's great. All we have to do now is do the third one. So let's go ahead and Actually, I'm not sure if it's going to be just simpler if we just do animate instead of duplicate. So we wanna move this, not class, as you can see by default, just this element from zero vertical width to duplicate round here to minus 79 vertical width, width, not weight. I'm not sure why I said this. So now this moves alongside with them and this needs to start scaling. This actually does not scale at all. It just gets here and uh, that's it. So it just gets here. So the only thing here that needs to change is you can see that the text here is actually black. So once we get around here, maybe around 25, this text should be changing to white so that we can actually see it. So let's go ahead and actually pick this one client name, let's add text color, and let's change it from if it's down at zero, so at zero should be, you know, white, or should be actually black. And then when it gets duplicate, when it gets to 
not 45, I want to manually change this to someone like 25. So when it gets to 25, let's change this to this smoky white. And uh, let's see if this actually works. So now it's black. It's actually, it's actually starting to fade in 21, right? So it's actually what we will do is only start triggering the animation at 26 and then animate it very quickly to this. So let me see how we're going to do this. I'm going to duplicate this. And then the first one, I want to make it at, let's say, 23. So at 23, it's still going to be black. And then at 25, so this happens very quickly, it's going to change to white smoke. Let's see if this works. Do, 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 do. Yep, so now this works. Okay, so now we need to just duplicate this to this element as well. So let's duplicate, change the target to this one, and then duplicate this one where it's white, duplicate that and change target to this one, this one. Let's preview this. Nope, it's not fading. Again, maybe it's the class thing that's happening here. We only want to affect this element. So this is from black to white. Let's do this. Maybe it's not fading because I have not defined. Oh, first of all, this is not the same element. This one needs to be this one. I was just project. I, this is text, text. And this one is not class, element. All right. So now I'm affecting both of them. OK, and now they're happening together. So as you can see, selecting the right element and making sure that you're affecting the right element is key and a lot of kind of like weird things can happen when you're doing them. Okay, and with that, we have basically concluded this interaction and uh, yeah, everything that we wanted to cover in this crash course on Webflow animation. I hope you had a great time and you've learned a lot with us. Let me know in the comments below if this was helpful what other Webflow videos you want to see on our channel, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.